Alaska's culinary bounty includes some of our brilliant summer flowers. The idea of eating flowers may be a bit strange, but many flowers, including roses, violets, lavender, and nasturtiums, are not only edible, but truly tasty. Flower petals add beautiful colors and subtle flavors to a variety of preparations. Flower petals can be tossed into a salad, baked in a scone, bottled with vinegar, and used as the basis of jelly. Hi, I'm Leslie Shalcross with the University of Alaska Fairbanks Cooperative Extension Service. This module provides guidelines on the use of an edible wild flower found extensively throughout Alaska, the tall, showy, fuchsia-colored fireweed. For information on other edible Alaskan flowers, you may want to look at Cooperative Extension's publication on edible flowers. Fireweed is a circumpolar plant growing around the globe in subarctic and arctic regions with a history of use as both a seasonal food and a medicine. All parts of the plant have been used, roots, stems, leaves, flower buds, flower petals, and even the fluff attached to the seeds after the flower is gone. Fireweed is the common name for the perennial plant Epilobium angustifolium. You will find the plant growing in open meadows, in areas recently cleared of vegetation by wildfires, and along riverbeds and roadsides. In Alaska, we say that the summer has started when the blossoms lowest on the stem have begun to bloom, and that summer's end is in sight when the blossoms reach the top of the stalk. Long before the plant blooms, fireweed shoots can be harvested for food. They're a good source of vitamin C and vitamin A. The pale shoots can be lightly cooked or eaten raw. Leaves and unopened buds can also be picked and used before the blossoms develop. The young slender leaves and the immature buds can be mixed with salad greens. As with many plants, the taste becomes stronger later in the season, so this early spring harvest is the best for this use. Let's move into the kitchen and take a look at the ways to use the fireweed blossoms. Research on food preservation is an ongoing process. The United States Department of Agriculture and the Cooperative Extension Service continuously apply new research findings to their recommendations for food preservation techniques. The guidelines in this module may be revised as additional knowledge is gained that may increase the margin of safety or improve the quality of home preserved foods. Consult your local Cooperative Extension office annually for updated information. Whatever the intended food product, use pesticide-free flowers. Flowers beside the road are beautiful and easy to reach, but are often covered with dust and dirt from the road. Start by selecting young, undamaged blossoms. Older blossoms will be bitter. Next, rinse them carefully in a colander to remove dust and bugs. On this stem, we can see some of the older blossoms and we'll take those off and get rid of them. And then we'll use these fresher ones that have come out more recently. The buds can also be used. Flowers may be dried for future use or stored in the refrigerator for a few days. One quick way to use the blossoms is in a salad or as a spectacular garnish. I often use flower garnishes for special occasion meals. The fresh, bright pink blossoms can add color and a mild flavor to a salad. Here we've got a salad with some bright nasturtiums and some borage flowers and a viola and we'll add some of our nice, brilliant pink fireweed blossoms. Today, we'll be providing information on making three different products, fireweed jelly, homesteaders honey, and a fireweed blossom vinegar. And we'll be back in a moment to show you how to extract the juice to make jelly. The first product that we'll talk about is fireweed jelly. 
We will show how to extract the juice today, but leave jelly making for another time. You can find a recipe for fireweed jelly in Cooperative Extension's book, Collecting and Using Alaska's Wild Berries and Other Wild Products. If you're new to jelly making, home canning methods, or need updated information, check with your Cooperative Extension office for further information. Jelly making always starts with juice. To extract the juice from fireweed blossoms, we first need two cups of tightly packed blossoms. There we go. We'll pour two and a half cups of boiling water over the packed blossoms. We'll let this stand until cooled and then cover and place in the refrigerator overnight to extract the color. I have some that we started yesterday and I'll show you how to strain it. We can strain the liquid through a jelly bag or through several layers of cheesecloth or use a fine metal strainer like this one. This recipe should give you about two and a half cups of juice, which can be used right away to make your jelly or refrigerated for up to a week or frozen for up to a year. This is enough juice for a single batch of jelly and makes approximately three cups or three half pint jars of fireweed jelly. Today we're going to store this juice for later use. Let's now see how to make our next product, Homesteader's Honey. One common use of fireweed blossoms is to make a lightly flavored syrup called homesteader's honey or fireweed honey. In this recipe, a sugar syrup is flavored and colored by steeping the flower blossoms in the hot syrup. The syrup is then strained and canned in jars. Let me show you how to make this interesting product. The process will require several pots on the stove all at once and having all your equipment and jars ready to use. We'll need four half pint jars with two piece lids, a pot for sterilizing the jars, and a pot for preparing the lids, a pot for cooking the syrup, and a boiling water canner. We also need a jar lifter and a lid lifter, measuring cups, a spoon for stirring the syrup, and a strainer or cheesecloth for straining the flour infused syrup. We'll be back in a minute to get the process started. You'll begin by sterilizing jars by boiling them for 10 minutes. These jars have already been sterilized. We'll leave them in the hot water until we're ready to fill them. We'll prepare 
our lids according to the manufacturer's instructions. These lids will be kept in a pot of hot but not boiling water until we're ready to use them to soften the sealing compound. We've prepared our boiling water canner by placing a rack in the bottom and filling it part way with warm water. Now we'll start the sugar syrup. This is a new recipe. Our recipe calls for six cups of sugar, three cups of water, thirty white clover blossoms, eighteen red clover blossoms, and eighteen fireweed blossoms. You may use more flowers or different proportions depending upon our preferences. We've got our sugar and water in a large heavy bottom pan over low heat and we'll bring the water and sugar to a boil and maintain a steady boil over low heat. We'll set the timer for 10 minutes when the syrup begins to boil and we'll cook it until it's the color and consistency of honey. So let's get this going. I'll be back when the syrup is ready. This looks ready. So we'll remove the pan from the stove and add white clover blossoms, red clover blossoms, and the fireweed blossoms. We'll let the flour steep in the syrup for 15 minutes. Now we'll strain the mixture through cheesecloth or a strainer and then pour our flavored syrup into hot canning jars, leaving a quarter inch of headspace. Using a funnel or a tempered glass measuring cup with a spout will make the process easier and help keep the jar rims clean. There we go.
Wipe the jar rims. Place the hot lid and ring on the jar. Rings should be fingertip tight. I'll be back when all the jars are in the canner. We'll place our jars into the prepared boiling water canner, making sure that the water covers the top of the jars by at least one inch. We'll cover the pot and bring the water to a full boil. This pot's already very hot and should come back to a boil pretty quickly. This homesteader's honey will be processed for five minutes in the boiling water canner. And I'll start the timing as soon as the loaded pot boils, which I think it is already. We'll be back in five minutes when the processing is finished. We'll turn off the heat and carefully remove the jars from the boiling water canner. Place them on a cooling rack with about an inch between each jar. We'll let these cool undisturbed for 12 to 24 hours. Our jars have cooled. We'll check the seals by tapping with a spoon and looking to see if the lid is slightly depressed. We'll remove the screw bands and gently clean the jars if necessary. one is from an earlier batch that didn't seal, you can hear the difference. These jars are pretty clean, so we can work with them as they are. We'll label the jars with the date, the name of the product, and the processing method. The color of the syrup may vary from light green to pale yellow, depending upon the pigments in the flowers and exactly how many flowers you use. This was from another batch and we can see the difference in the colors. Use this sweet treat on pancakes and waffles throughout the year for a reminder of summer. Working with sugar syrups is always a challenge. If your syrup crystallizes before canning, add two tablespoons of water per cup of syrup and recook until the crystals dissolve, then process. If your honey crystallizes after being opened, remove the lid from the jar and microwave the honey for about a minute. Or put the jar in a pan of hot water on top of the stove and heat until the crystals are dissolved. The final product that we're looking at today is a flour-infused vinegar. Flour-flavored vinegars are fun and easy to make. They can add flavor and interest to salad dressings and sauces. Fireweed, or a combination of fireweed and some other flowers and herbs, produces a nicely colored and flavored product. Let me show you the process. I've washed and patted dry our flowers, and I've sterilized a jar by boiling it in water for 10 minutes. We'll fill the jar with a quarter cup of fireweed blossoms 
and a few sprigs of lavender. We'll pour one cup of vinegar over the flowers and herbs. and seal the jar. This recipe can be personalized by using more or fewer blossoms or different combinations of flowers. Use white wine vinegar or rice vinegar so that it doesn't overpower the flavor of the flowers. We'll let the jar stand in a cool dark place for at least three to four weeks. Check the jar after a couple of weeks to make sure that the flowers are still covered by vinegar. Add more vinegar if necessary and close the jar again. This vinegar has been steeped for four weeks. We'll strain the vinegar to remove the flowers. You may use a coffee filter, cheesecloth, or a strainer to strain out the flowers. Now we can pour the flavored vinegar into a sterilized half pint bottle or jar. A nice touch is to add a flower or an herb sprig to the bottle and seal. Look at that beautiful color from the fireweed. I'll be looking forward to my next salad. The fireweed plant inspires artists and chefs and is certainly part of Alaska's natural bounty. We hope you'll enjoy adding this flower to your wild summer harvest. In our next module, we'll talk about another flowering plant, Alaska's wild rose.